Coming at you live from Glasgow, Scotland, this is a Nate Doggy Dog 52 production. What's up guys, it's Nate Doggy Dog 52 and I'm back again with another sneaker review. This time it's an Air Jordan 11. Um, it was the first time it's ever been released in this colourway. It's the Air Jordan 11 Retro Low. Give you a quick look at the 30th anniversary style box. It's an all black box with a gold embossed Jumpman, that metallic gold colour. I'll give you a quick look at the box numbers. So what we have right here is a Air Jordan 11 Retro Low. Official colourway is grey mist, white, midnight navy. Uh, style code is 528895 and the colour code is 007. These are, as always, in my US 13 UK 12 sizing. Um, this shoe did launch earlier this year on the 11th of April. Um, and I'll give you a quick look at them. That is them right there. Uh, I've got my receipt and things like that here from Nike.com, as always. So I'm just going to pull out uh, both of them and we will get started. There we go, so I'll give you a quick spin around of the sneaker and then we can get started. There we go, so this is the first time it's ever released um, in this particular colourway, the Georgetown colourway. Um, so, uh, the Jordan 11 uh, originally released in 1995. Um, Michael wore it in the 1995 um, semi-finals against Orlando uh, when he had re just returned uh, in early March. Um, he returned with a number 45. Um, and then when he switched to number 23, he was also fined for wearing the Jordan 11 because he was wearing the white and black with Concord colourway. Um, the reason for that is uh, the rest of his Bills teammates were wearing all black shoes, so he was fined $5,000 for that. And the Bills were fined a reported $25,000 for Michael changing his number um, after game one. Uh, so after that, Michael wore the, the Concords for a couple of games, he then switched out and he actually ended up wearing Perry Hardaway's shoe uh, and then he was given the Space Jam colourway to wear. Um, so throughout the season, the following season, the 95-96 season, after being eliminated from the um, playoffs, um, Michael came back, wore number 23 for the entire season and the Bills were energised by the pickup of uh, all round hard, hard man Dennis Rodman. Um, so with that, they went on to post an NBA record, 72 and 10 records, or 72 wins and 10 losses. Uh, Michael Jordan also um, was only the second ever player to get a clean sweep of MVP. So he got the um, regular season, all-star and finals MVP. Um, the only other player to do that was Willis Reed, and that was in the 1970s, early 70s, I believe it was. Um, so Michael accomplished a hell of a lot in this particular sneaker um, and then he originally wore the Concord colourway which is white upper black um, paint leather and uh, in the playoffs he switched to the black and red version. Um, but this, the inspiration behind this shoe came from a few different elements. Um, it was a Tinker Hatfield shoe. Um, just to kind of give you a little bit of a background. Um, People, when you're designing a shoe, it roughly takes anything from 2 years to 18 months. So that means that Tinker Hatfield actually began designing this shoe um, while Michael was still retired. Um, so he just kind of, he was told not to, but he still kept going along and doing it um, regardless. So he came up with this concept of um, bringing a sort of a premium material and a really sort of flashy looking material, but also bringing it onto the shoe to give it... Um, a performance aspect so he took inspiration from a, a lawnmower which was basically that the paint leather on this shoe was to protect the upper and um, with the lawnmower being essentially the bumper around it protects the blades from people from touching the blades or anything touching the blades and the blades from um, touching other things as well um, but then he was faced with quite a few problems because he was using this new um, mesh that he'd actually found on a backpack an mountaineering backpack this uh, Kajura mesh um, or ballistic mess, however you want to call it. Faced a little bit of a sort of a back um, backlash because of that, but he decided to continue because he said, you know, people buy convertible cars, people buy, and he also referenced Denver Airport where it's almost like a tent sort of a style. Um, so he referenced them. So this was again so much of a game changer. Um, when Michael first saw the, saw the shoe, he actually took it ahead of time, and Tinker said to him not to wear it, but he decided to wear it anyway. 
Um, and it really was a remarkable show. And I can totally understand where Michael would have come from being desperate to wear these because the 11 is probably one of those sneakers that's so eye catching because it has that patent leather on it. But the main performance um, function of this patent leather was it was going to be harder wearing, um, it would retain its shape a bit better than traditional leather, um, and it would basically act as a protective layer to the mesh on top. Um, as Michael was starting to get a little bit older, um, things like lockdown and things like that were becoming more important to him. So the Tinker introduced these um, webbed lace loops that were um, embroidered and stitched onto the upper. Um, basically these are allowed to give it a little bit better um, lockdown into the shoe and to hold Michael's foot within the shoe. Um, that coupled with the patterned leather really sort of looked to, to steady him up. Um, the Jordan 11 also seen the introduction of carbon fibre. So you've got the carbon fibre shank plate um, within this sneaker as well um, and you just kind of do have that regular Phylon uh, style midsole. Um, another thing that we saw was the return of the translucent outsole, something that hadn't been seen since the Jordan 6. Um, so it was the 5, the 6 and then it was all the way till the 11 um, that the translucent outsole but it was back. So we've got the translucent outsole and you've got that um, midnight navy colour in the Jumpman just right here. Now this particular colourway um, was originally seen as a Georgetown sample set um, when it was displayed in the new Georgetown Nike store. Um, there was basically Jordans 1 through the 2011 I believe it was at that point or 2010 correct me if I'm wrong. Um, and the Jordan 11 having compared images um, before I shot this video, this is literally just a low top version of that Jordan 11 that was included within that collection. Um, um, the reason for that is because um, Jordan Brand and uh, the University of Georgetown have had a long-running partnership. Um, that's one of the stories that I had heard. Um, another one was because of the iconic image of uh, Alan Iverson while he was at the University of Georgetown wearing the Concord 11s and they really wanted to celebrate that. Um, it's more likely that it's going to be the, the Jordan Brand and Georgetown story. Um, However, it does beg the question of where are you know, the Marquette and the Cal Bears colourways. So that could be that. I know we have the UNC ones coming up um, what, next weekend. So um, it could well be that, that it's just a celebration of the Jordan-sponsored uh, universities. Um, but this is Georgetown Low. It is a 30th anniversary colourway that is depicted by that 30 patch on the insole just there. Um, so you've got that uh, navy paint leather on there with a the white midsole, translucent bottom. You've got the white rope laces, you've got the uh, Jumpman Jordan call out on the third aisle up uh, with the navy patch with the white uh, writing on there. And you've got the all navy sock liner and the navy insole with that 30th anniversary. You also have a patch as with the 11 highs or mids, whatever you'd like to call them, um, where it says quality basketball products inspired by the greatest player ever. Um, and you also have, it's just all white laces in this one, uh, and then you have the clear. Um, aglets on the laces there as well. Uh, you also have the Jumpman has been moved from basically the, the lateral heel to basically down the spine of the heel. You'll find that right here. Also the famous number 23 um, is still always there. Um, so again this is the first time this particular colourway has released. Um, Michael did wear the bread lows in the 96 NBA Finals against the Supersonics um, and winning the NBA Championship in the Jordan 11 um, was Michael's fourth title total and his first and his second three-peat after his retirement. So a lot of firsts and a really, really massive shoe. Um, probably the, the most um, recognisable and people's favourite Jordan, the Jordan 11. Again, ever since 2008, they've been bringing back um, a, either a new colourway or a retro and uh, an older colourway um, or an original colourway on the Jordan 11 every Christmas. So it's the Saturday before. Uh, Christmas Day. Last year they did two, they did the, the um, Ultimate Gift of Flight pack, so you had the Pantone 11 and then two days earlier you also had the Legend Blue 11. So this year it's going to be a brand new 11, the 72 and 10, but who knows there might be a second 11. Uh, without further ado, let me pop them on feet and let you guys see how they look. There we go guys, this is the Air Jordan 11 Retro Low Georgetown or Grey Mist. On feet, let you see a front view, another side. I'm going to go around to the other side, back view. There we go. So, again, as always, left foot would be how I would wear them with the laces tucked in, right foot with the laces tied. But a very, very dope sneaker on feet. 
something that I'd love to get some Georgetown um, shorts or certainly possibly a jersey to go with these. Very, very dope on feet. Okay guys, let me give you a final look at the George, Georgetown 11 Lowe's or the Grey Mist Jordan 11 Lowe's. If you have enjoyed this video then please do leave a like, drop a comment down below and be sure to hit that subscribe button down below also. Um, if you want to follow me and kind of keep up to date with what I'm doing on a more day to day basis then you can follow me on Instagram and Twitter. That's going to be at NathanCare20 which will appear right here. If you want to use my hashtags, it's hashtag SneakerFanWorldwide and hashtag NDD52 for me, NateDoggyDog52. Again, they'll appear right here. Um, let me give you one final look at the sneaker before I get out of here. Thanks for checking out the vid. Peace from NateDoggyDog.